important record button. And just as I say it lately, I'd have to say the last month, I've been pretty on point with that. I say it, it happens. That is exciting. Let me move my microphone over a little bit closer. And good morning, everyone. It is Monday. It is Monday Mindset. And I posted about just different things that we're going to do to help organize our brain this morning, which is going to be super exciting. And we hope you have a nice weekend, but this is Carol Sue, a.k.a. Naughty Boss, Lady Canada Live, with you. Sisters, and good morning, everyone. <laughs> Excuse me, my name is Janice, a.k.a. Wellness Diva 5.0, Mindset Monday, and always so much to chat about. So let's dive right on into it. The floor is yours, Cassie. Thank you so much. And, you know, often a lot of times... We, especially on social media, we chat about this often. Things are not what they are perceived to be. A lot of people, you know, whether you're in direct sales, whether you're an entrepreneur, influencer, and even just that stay-at-home mom or dad or just a person that loves to be on social media, you put up this stage, this front, um, you know, with pictures and good feel vibes and all those things are great. But a lot of times, a lot of people don't understand that, A, we don't really know anyone's journey because we're not in their shoes, number one. And number two, how to organize the brain to really have that good mindset. Now, a lot of people think mindset is just kind of self-induced with feel-good things. That is true. When you surround yourself with positive vibes, positive people, that is definitely going to enheighten your good feel and, and release those endorphins and, and that feel good motion within your brain. But a lot of times we have to actually organize our brain just like we live by say a, you know, a calendar or an organizational book to kind of help us keep on track. I mean, you know, certain days you're going to do laundry, you're going to go grocery shopping, you're going to do this or that with your kids, those projects. And you kind of get overwhelmed by doing these lists sometimes. I know I have. I know I have, I know you have as well. So when we talk about setting up for success with your mindset, it's actually the action to prepare in your mind to be organized and, and staying in that mindset. It just doesn't happen. Of course, you're going to have some people that just naturally have that kind of just that cheery personality. They wake up refreshed, they wake up happy and kudos to them. You know, maybe their DNA is such that that's just their personality. They just wake up that way. But I would say for most of us, and I would I would kind of bet most of us don't always wake up cherry, ready to go, get 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 the day going on. Some of us may need uh, think they need that mojo, right? That that coffee. Some of them, it's you know, getting food in their tummy. Some of them it's you know gut health. We always talk about gut health and getting those vitamins in. Uh, others, it may be like putting on the radio, just they're in a real pissy mood or they're just like didn't sleep well. So they crank up the music and they pound their favorite song and they just kind of get their, their energy flowing with activity, which again is getting that good feels motions going on in your body, which is going to release those endorphins that makes you feel good. Um, I and, you know, so everyone has their little niche niche of what they like to do, or what they don't like to do. I always like to see physical things. So more on the vision sense. So when we decided to move to Florida and we were talking about, you know, the kind of home that we wanted to buy and that ever, you know, precious vision of that pool for almost, you know, 39 years plus, you know, I said, I want to wake up and know that after I've made my bed, because that's the first thing of the day for me always first that first that for first little small success is making my bed to look out the window and think I'm in paradise. And we created that vision when I dreamt about that vision john's done a wonderful job with creating all the different gardens around the pool and it just gives you that good good feeling and that totally relaxes me so that's the first thing I do I make my bed. And then I look at the pool for a few minutes, although. We have some work to do today because we had a really bad tropical storm yesterday, which didn't last long, but boy, there's a lot of worms, little little and big worms apparently at the bottom of the pool, which she's taking care of, thank God. And uh, we have to like clean the, uh, the patio, but 
you know, it's so funny that just visualizing and seeing our backyard that puts me in that good feeling, which helps with my mindset. So that's my daily. The other thing I like to do is over the years, I picked up books and, you know, Jan and I've often shared how much we love to read. Uh, she is a 14 time bestseller, also a publisher. I'm a first time author, co-author, and I'm excited about that. But I, I, I've always loved to journal. I've always loved to read books. So a book that I received, and I want to say it had to be, oh gosh, maybe in the early mid eighties, was a book by Spencer Johnson, MD, and it's called The Precious Present. And what I love about reading, and especially reading for an intentional purposes for my mindset, is something short, short stories, right? Uh, the anthologies are great for that. But even if you pick up a book, now, if I'm going to open up this book, I'm going to show you the cover. Now, I know it's backwards. But if you look at, and this is for our viewers, but for our listeners, uh, what I'm sharing with the people that can, uh, the viewers that can actually see what I'm showing, it's going to show pages. And it's hard to read, but the pages are very short. As you can see, most of the, most of the page is blank. So there's a few words on it. So that's what that looks like. Um, but the whole book is like that. You know, it, it's it's different uh, fonts. So it automatically, I love a book that has different fonts. So it kind of just gives the flow. But the whole point is a simple message that does wonders for your mindset. And I'm not going to give you the whole gist of the book because I want you to, to go out and read it. It, it really is, it, is just puts you in such a different mindset. The precious present has nothing to do with a physical present, you know, like a gift, like a, something that comes in a box that's wrapped. And that is all I'm going to say on that one. But it really does put your mind into a perspective that really enheightens that good, feel good feelings on the mindset. The other quick one I want to share with you is from Richard Carlson, PhD. And, you know, over the last year, we've been through a lot, right? We've been through a lot of family, a community, a state, a country. And the name of this book is uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff with Your Family. So, you know, let's be real. Forest Family Fun was going on for quite a while in, in a lot of states. And sadly, in some states, they're still in kind of lockdown mode, right? And what happens when you are with your loved ones for an extensive period of time with kind of no pause, no break, because you can't get out and shop. You, you know, you may be going out in the yard, but you're really kind of staying close to home. And this book, this particular PhD, really helps you understand that don't sweat the small stuff to actually find simple ways to keep your daily responsibilities, your household chores, like we all gotta have to do that. And then that kind of chaos taken away from our actual life. So don't let the small stuff of that stuff put so much chaos in the life that you live. And again, it's a, it's a, a small little book and it's broken out into chapters. Um, have family meetings. I'm just flipping to chapter 58. Have family meetings. Ask yourself, and these, these uh, chapters are small. Ask yourself, why should I be exempt from the rest of the human race? Now, that's so funny. That's the one that came up. Um, let go of your expectations. Never, ever take your spouse or significant other for granted. Create a selfish ritual. I mean, all good things that are really going to implement action and action becomes habits that are going to help create a good mindset. So that was my opening, Jan. What did you think of that? And tell me some of the good things that you want to share with our audience and viewers on this Monday mindset. Well, you know, I could just chat on and on forever. Oops, I'm having um, issues with my uh, comb. You know, and speaking of hair combs, and this has nothing to do with nothing, but, you know, you get, you buy combs at a certain time and then all of a sudden they all start breaking. And that's what I'm going through right now. So as we were, as you were chatting before, it kept sliding and it like pulls my hair and I'm like, Ooh, that hurts. But anyways, I'll just have a little cheese with my wine and uh, we'll move forward here. So one, um, it's been a, a tough week for me and, and I'm just going to update everybody real quick. I have not been at kickboxing and I miss it terribly. <laughs> Has it affected my mindset? 
I'm going to say maybe just a little. I'm waiting to get uh, clearance because I'm having some gallbladder issues. Um, nothing to worry about. But I think when you have a certain routine and you're derailed from that because of a little something that may be happening, you know, <laughs> in my mind, I want to still feel productive and still, still feel good about my day and how I go forward. Ooh. That was me. That was weird. So no. I did get a lot done. I was answering, I was answering um, someone on our feed. Oh, cool. <laughs> and uh, I hit the wrong button. So that's, you were, you were hearing the back. The backlash. The back, well, I don't know what backlash, what is the background? Background noise. Yeah, something like that. Whatever. Whatever. All right, stop stealing my thunder. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> When you stop, I, I didn't want you to keep stopping. That's, that was the point. Okay. Well, not that I have any thun, thunder. And <laughs> but anyway, it actually looks like it may thunder. Uh, it's kind of doom and gloom here today. But, you know, <laughs> that cabinet that I was talking about with all my like Tupperware kind of stuff, I'm like, that's it. I got that done. And I thought, quite honestly, that I would have to get rid of a lot. But I only had four containers that I didn't have the uh the tops for wow that's all that was it and as I was doing it of course you know you got to make a mess before it really comes out good and Gary walked in and he's like why don't you just get rid of all that crap and we'll just go out and buy some new new ones and I'm like no I mean if they're still good they're good like that doesn't you know I don't want to do that so yes and I was very happy that I got that done I did some Re, excuse me, some reorganization um, with my office stuff on that side of the loft. So I'm really happy to get that done. Um, just a lot of little things. And I did something yesterday that I can't even remember the last time that I did this only when I um, broke my foot, but I pretty much was a couch potato yesterday. You know, did my chores, I get up, I make my bed. You know, got some stuff done, but um, my body was saying, relax. And that's exactly what I did. Normally, I'd be like, oh my God, I got to do this. I got to do that. Nope, didn't even think about it. I don't even think I turned on the computers or anything. So that was refreshing for me because I physically needed that time to relax. Um, I can't wait to get back to kickboxing. Like, I'm dying to go back. Um, and I was thinking, well, maybe at some point this afternoon, I'll have Gary pull my bag out because I do have a bag at home, maybe just throw a couple punches so I feel real good. And I saw that they posted these new awesome gloves, which I'm dying to get, but you know, I have four sets already, so I can't really justify getting them right now. That's all good. good if you gave me a pair. Hmm. I oh. am. Oh, it'll be like a birthday present. I, I do want some boxing gloves. Not that I'm going to, I can't visualize me kicking the box, you know, that, but I, I really like, um, because they're, they're heavy and they do give you that good motion. And I, what I've been doing is uh, putting wrist weights on and, and trying to do that similar motion. But I remember a lot of their gloves have weights on them or they're heavier or something. There's something unique about them, isn't there? Are, yes, carbon yeah. strikes. So the ones, all the ones that I have are uh, 18 ounces, but these are 20 ounces and they're black and they have this nice design on it. And I'm like, wow. oh, come to mama. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like, you know what, you, you listen to your body. And I think a lot of times that takes an intuitive mindset to know when to say, hey, I'm doing too much with my body. Uh, we find that with pickleball. If we, you know, we always talk about how much we love, our, we love the game. We love pickleball. You know, we love the camaraderie, the competitiveness, and really the social aspect of it. But what we found, and especially last week, was there was a couple times we played over four hours because you don't, you're like you're in the midst of playing and you're not continually playing four hours. If it's a crowded day, you've got your, put your paddle in the, setup that they have and you know so sometimes you got you know to wait about 10 minutes in between a game which is not a bad thing that's you know when we're hydrating and whatnot but we're finding is from a game perspective 
you know, from a skill perspective. And this goes with why your body's telling us to rest, whether it's mindset from computers and electronics, whether it's from exercising, it's our own body's way, nature's way of saying, you need to slow your brain down. You need to just kind of chill and relax or your muscles are screaming, okay, give me a little, I, I need a little rest here. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think for some that are so dedicated to what they do and what we do is that whole fear that you're going to miss something, you know, you're going to fear you're going to miss something that's going to go on. And the problem with that is then you get into that cycle and that's where obsession takes over. And that is not good for your mindset. So you have to listen to your mind. You have to listen to your body and say, no one to stop, no one to kind of put those legs up, take a little chill. You know, if you are a stay at home parent and your children are still doing remote learning, you, you have to also don't forget to get your calendar and schedule yourself for whether it's time to, to you know, time to read, time to catch up on what you're going after your goals, writing things down, whether it's to paint your nails, whether it's to, you know, give yourself a pedicure if you're not going out. These are all, or watch a movie, you know, just lie down, relax and watch a movie. It doesn't mean that you're gonna fall into the trap of the couch potato syndrome, but it's also an essential part for our bodies to, to rest. Rest is really important, not only from a daytime perspective, but also from a nighttime perspective, because that's when our bodies naturally heal themselves. And if you're not getting a good rest, so, you know, speaking of kind of laying low yesterday, we got up, we had a very, very busy weekend. We spent it with two lovely women uh, down the street and they really uh, treated us to their resort living. They live in a 55 and older community. They had pickleball courts there. So shout outs to Laura and Mel. We uh, played pickleball there. They had a concert, uh, you know, band came in like a cover band on Saturday night. Uh, they have a lot of them, well, not a lot, but some have the golf carts. So we're on the golf carts, you know, drive around, having a good time with that. Use uh, their facilities. They got a beautiful pool. And uh, so yesterday was our, our day to kind of like, do we kind of relax from such a busy weekend? And so we did. We went, we played pickleball just for, I think, three or four games. And then we relaxed. John was catching up on the series that he's been watching. I was dealing with his phone because he had inadvertently drowned his cell phone in a hot tub. Uh, you know, we, we were joking, you know, and I said, how could you not know, especially a guy, you know, you know, you, you've got that, you know, phone's not that the phone is heavy, but it's in your pocket. You don't feel it? Well, he didn't feel it. And needless to say, it's in a waterproof container, but the only waterproof container works if the bottom part is closed. So needless to say, his phone drowned. So we are in the process of going through getting him a replacement phone. So uh, he relaxed on the couch yesterday. I dealt with the phone issue because it just was easier. So sometimes don't you find it's easier when you do things on your own? Even though you know somebody else is supposed to do it, it just makes it go easier. So we did that and then we just kind of chilled and then it was funny, he said, what are we gonna do for dinner? We've been eating a lot, you know, a lot of people this time of year, cookouts, barbecues start happening. You find that you kind of eat to kind of get to that flow of eating a lot of meat which John and I really are trying to back off from. So I made a delicious, uh, we've got these great homemade pasta noodles from this great Italian restaurant. And he said, what are you gonna cook? Like you have to go out grocery shopping, we have nothing. I said, that's the challenge. And for me, I find that as a challenge, like what am I gonna create when I have nothing? So I looked at the cabin, I found a jar of capers, I found some artichokes. He had bought these chopped red, not crushed tomatoes, but you know, chunky tomatoes. It had a little spice to them. And then I went in the freezer and I found some spiral spaghetti squash. You know how they kind of, it's already like spaghetti looking, but it's squash. So I sauteed all of that together. And then I used these homemade noodles and some olive oil, a little bit of butter, some Himalaya salt. You know, so we sit down and he looks, he goes, wow, this is like something I'm gonna get at a restaurant. I said, don't underestimate naughty boss in the kitchen. <laughs> well, thankfully I had done enough cooking toward the yeah. end of the week that we had basically eight leftovers all weekend, which, you know, 
that worked out great for us. So, you know, I'm not sure what's on the menu this week. And I'm sure once, once I get off, I'm going to hear, Hey, uh, what are we going to have for lunch? Uh, what are we going to have for dinner? So I'll, I'll be expecting that question and I'm not going to be able to answer it. Oh, well. How many other spouses go through that? Yeah. I wonder how many other partners and spouses go through that. They kind of look at you. What's, what are we going to have for dinner? What are we going to have for lunch? Why do I do that? <laughs> I don't know, but, and then he it's, makes a mean, he makes a mean, he, may, he makes a mean steak on the grill. I'll have to say that. I'll give him that. He doesn't make a good steak. And then it was so funny because on Saturday, you know, he had you all frozen. Of, no, I'm not frozen. Are you frozen? So, all right. We're good. We're good. No. So Saturday, he was, you know, outside all day long. He's <laughs> digging up the backyard, you know, taking up the pavers, all the heavy equipment's out. And right at 12 o'clock, it's lunchtime. Where's the food? <laughs> like right on time, my husband. They right do on that. Time, oh, they do. time feeding. They're always hungry. Oh, I might. Yeah, like right. these, they're always hungry. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like nonstop. I wonder if their metabolism burned. I wonder if their. I wonder if their metabolism. I believe a man's metabolism. I'm gonna have to do a little research on that, but I do believe a men's metabolism burns quicker. That's why women get all pissy when, you know, the guys drop drop weight like a dime and women like really struggle at it and have to like work at it. And they're like, oh, I just cut out, you know, beef and some beer and back to male trim rate, trim waist. Well, I'm like, whatever. Well, the funny thing about that is, well, not the funny thing, but um, scientifically, obviously men have more testosterone from women. So that's why a lot of that stuff occurs. <laughs> excuse me and um because he's doing so much physical labor with you know picking up the pavers and i think they're like 30 or 30 pounds a piece for one paver so he's getting in a lot of he's exerting a lot of energy so you know i make sure he's well hydrated and you know have some snacks ready but i swear to god well lately he has been doing the um the grocery shopping you know because if he's got to go to home depot oh, i'll just run into bj's you know and pick up some stuff so um, I haven't actually been to the grocery store probably in about a month or so. So he gets all his little snacks, Good for you. but I'm like, okay, where's the gluten-free stuff? It's like, you know, Tate's chocolate chip cookies, the crackers, you know, he has to have the little things. Ay, ay, ay. Anyways. Well, we know what's on his mind. We know what's on his mindset when he's at the Ooh. grocery store. Gary's treat food. Yes. I know. And, and it's so funny. I really try to. Now, how many, again, this comes with mindset. When you go in there, I've been really faithful now. Like, I take my list and I make sure because I'm uh, intermittent faster, so I don't break fast till probably, you know, depends. And it's flexible, but usually around two. So if I'm going to go grocery shopping, I actually like to go in the morning because in the mornings I'm not hungry. Because how many times? I know our viewers can relate. You go to the grocery store and you're hungry. And at the end caps of everything is all the stuff that they want you to buy and that you actually really do want to buy. And you're hungry. So you're like, oh, I need that. I need that. And then you get back. You're like, this doesn't even have anything to do with the recipe I'm making. What is all this crap I bought? So I really try to go in when I'm not hungry. And that usually is in the morning time. I'm, I'm just one of those people that do not. It doesn't mean that I don't eat breakfast from time to time. But I only really have tried to embrace only eating when I'm hungry. So there will be times when we're, you know, gathering to eat and I'm not hungry and I won't. And sometimes I'll say, well, why aren't you eating? Because I'm not hungry. I really try to only eat now when I'm hungry, which doesn't always go well with, you know, the time that we're eating. But you know what? You, you kind of, you just kind of finagle around it and, or eat something smaller and say, I'm just going to eat something small and light. And that makes it easier. So Monday, going back to Monday mindset, you know, we, you know, how are we starting out our week? Now we already know, we talked about this before Sunday is the first day of the week. So you should be getting going on your Monday mindset already on Sunday. Right. But Monday mindset is more of for the entrepreneur, the person that's working outside the home, that stay at home mom or dad and knowing because for some reason, Sunday, you're kind of in that still weekend mode. And Monday's the day, for whatever reason, 
because it's not a weekend, that we start thinking about all the crap we got to do, right? All the shit, all the appointments. Uh, I got to do this. I got to get this accomplished. I've got to do this errand. I've got to, you know, I've got this appointment. And it's overwhelming. We get a little overwhelmed with that. And that is why a planner a calendar is really good. So I really try to do that on Sunday night, knowing what's coming. I have a very, very busy week. I'm super excited that I am going to be uh, part of a very first premiere event that is uh, has to do with chair and dance with the cheerleading dance world. So it's uh, this is kind of like the last road to cheerleading worlds. And if you don't know that, you can certainly Google cheerleading worlds. It is an event, a cheerleading event, a dance event that also takes place uh, in Orlando at the ESPN Center at Disney. Um, I don't know how many years it's been. I haven't been in a few, quite a few years, but these are where the best of the best, you know, people from, you know, programs from not only the United States, but all over the world come and, the company that I've been uh, assisting with working in, uh, with is producing a virtual event. And this is where all the tops of different divisions are actually going to be competing out of their own like, location, but it's good. we're going to be broadcasting it virtually live. And, you know, there'll be a judging panel, world judges that are going to be there. And it's a kind of like a good, great practice run for them to shout out to all the programs in the gym. If you want more information on that, you can just Google or go to uh, the winners. And that's with the S, the winners choice uh, championships with a plural.com winners choice championships.com and uh, the very reasonable ticket. And you get to see all these programs that you would normally see and so for anyone that's you know a chair and dance enthusiast this is going to be a great event so i'm excited about doing that this week along with another uh event so i gotta you know gonna be i'm gonna be broadcasting all over the place this week so it's gonna be one of those weeks that's awesome and you know with having such a busy week as you said that planner is critical it's in we we talk about this all the time the computerized stuff is great. <laughs> Your computer calendars, you can sync them with different apps, but when you put pen to paper, it really solidifies and it keeps you accountable to yourself because if you have an issue with your computer, like I did with one of my computers on Friday, I have my planner, all my stuff in there. So that's always good to have that backup. On that note, Mindset Monday, what, excuse me, what are you going to do to set yourself up for success for this week? Tomorrow um, is Triumph Tuesday and, you know, so much going on with that. You know, I'm going to give everybody an update on my 75 hard, which I had to put on hold. I'll just say that. But anyways, Mindset Monday, what are you going to do your, for yourself to set yourself up for success? It's always good to Take time for yourself as well. And remember, we'll be here tomorrow about 8 a.m. ish Eastern Standard Time. My name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0. And I am with two sisters. And this is Carol Sue, live from uh, the sun is starting to pop out in Vero Beach. We had a little tropical storm yesterday. And so we're kind of digging out from that some of the brush and things that kind of fly around. But it is Monday Mindset. Make sure that part of your Monday Mindset planning is planning for ways, and they don't have to be everything that we've suggested. Come up with what works for you in getting that, that mindset ready that you feel good. You feel good that you know, you're accomplishing things or that you're setting yourself up for success because when you're happy and you feel good, it trickles down to everyone that you're around you, right? And that's what we want to do. We will see you tomorrow for Triumph Tuesday. That's the day that we're going to pat ourselves on the back that we did a good job. This is Carol So, aka Naughty Boss, Lady Canna, live from Barrow Beach. You guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. <laughs>